My name is Norman Waldrop from Andrew Sports Medicine in Birmingham, Alabama. Today I'm going to talk about a case series presentation on syndesmosis injuries and how the tightrope has changed the game. We're going to talk about aggressive rehabilitation and getting athletes back early in their return to play. In this specific case, we had an offensive lineman go down and he was unable to bear weight on the field. We had immediate x-rays taken in the locker room that were negative for fracture both at the ankle and around the knee. On exam in the locker room, he had tenderness extending nearly eight centimeters above the joint line quickly after the injury. He only had mild deltoid pain, but there was certainly concern for a more significant injury. In these cases, I began to rely on my algorithm, which I developed uh, several years ago when I was a fellow. We initially look at the athlete's inability to bear weight. If they're unable to bear weight on the field, they have a positive mid-shaft fibular squeeze, meaning they have pain at the ankle with mid-shaft fibular squeeze, certainly more indicative of a more significant injury when they have medial-sided deltoid tenderness. If they have tenderness extending five centimeters or greater above the ankle and pain with external rotation, we get weight-bearing x-rays. Despite what those weight-bearing x-rays say, I think it's necessary that we get an MRI in all of these athletes. Here are this particular athlete's weight-bearing x-rays, and I think this case is very illustrative of some of the concerns we have. If you look at the left side of the screen, you can see the contralateral comparison views, and his x-rays essentially look identical to the uninjured side. On the right side of the screen, you can see the lateral, and there's perhaps a little concern that the fibula may have shifted posteriorly, but most people would tell you that his ankle is okay and certainly something that we could treat conservatively based off this. But if you look at his physical exam, I was certainly concerned for, for a more significant injury. So I ordered an MRI based off that algorithm that I explained earlier. And you can see here on his MRI, I'm certainly more concerned for a more significant injury. On the left side of the screen, you can see the edema around the syndesmosis and the AITFL is completely torn. You can see the fluid extending out of the back of the uh, PITFL. When I see the fluid extending out the back, as you can see here in the FHL, I get concerned that there's been a tear posteriorly and there's been a compromise to the normal soft tissues posteriorly. On the right side of the screen is the top cut of the MRI. On my MRI series for syndesmosis injuries, I get a higher cut extending higher up the tibia, which allows me to see how high the fluid goes. And in this case, you can see the interosseous membrane is completely torn and the fluid's extending well above the top of the MRI. In my algorithm, if I see two ligaments are injured, I recommend an examination under anesthesia and stress fluoroscopy. In that case, with a patient asleep, if they have an unstable ankle, that athlete gets a diagnostic arthroscopy and a repair of the syndesmosis. If you think back to what I said earlier, that athlete with his normal weight-bearing x-rays, the x-rays looked like the ankle was congruent. If you think about the normal syndesmotic motion, if you injure the AATFL only, the external rotation of the normal fibula will increase by about 25%. There'll be increase in posterior translation by about two millimeters. But once you include a second ligament, and in this case, the interosseous membrane, that translation doubles to nearly four millimeters, and the external rotation increases by another 35%. If you include the PITFL, so you have complete rupture of the syndesmosis, there is greater than four millimeters of posterior translation, and the external rotation increases 60%. So if you think about this relative to that MRI I showed, if you have two ligaments injured, that is concerning for a dynamically unstable syndesmosis, and I think one that needs to be fixed. Here is that same athlete's stress exam under fluoroscopy while asleep under anesthesia. On the left side of the screen, this is what we typically see. This is this particular athlete's arthroscopic video. And you can see this is the posterior lateral corner of the, uh, of the ankle. And this is typical of what I see when I get in there with the arthroscope. You'll see the PITFL is completely torn off and it has a small piece of cartilage with it. I'll pull that out with a grasper. I'll clean up the posterior lateral corner and give this an area to heal down to. I'll clean up the AITFL portion that's flipped into the joint as well as the interosseous membrane. So I used the two-hole plate with the most inferior uh, tightrope placed one and a half centimeters above the joint, and these two tightropes are placed in a slightly divergent manner. I place ACP both in the deltoid and in the joint. I also place it in the injured syndesmosis to expedite the healing. And then finally, once the incisions are closed, I place jump start on the incision before placing the dressing and sending the patient to pack you. In the rehabilitation process, I think expedited rehabilitation is good for the athlete. It restores normal motion quickly. It reduces chronic pain and disability. Certainly, there's a secondary benefit of quick return to play. So in conclusion, the anatomic reduction is, is vital for a good long-term outcome. And ultimately, that's what we're looking for, for the ankle to last and these athletes to be confident 
in what they're doing and be confident in their ankle. The syndesmosis is a synovial joint with mobility in three planes, and that's critical. It's a mobile joint, and it's important for us as surgeons to remember that. That's where a flexible device like the tightrope can allow for that physiologic motion that we're looking for while providing stability. And the tightrope allows us to achieve those goals. Arthroscope the joint. It allows us to assess the cartilage injury and better look at the reduction that we're looking for in these athletes. We can see directly where the fibula is sitting in relation to the tibia and allows us to get it right every time. Thank you.